Well, in this video, we will be discussing on symmetry and Noether's theorem uh, in case of this uh, field theory perspective. So, uh, in the previous video, we have already uh, saw that the action is denoted by the integral over the Lagrangian density, which is a function of fields and the uh, derivatives of the fields. And from this, uh, we varied this action. We can vary this action to get the field equations uh, or the equation of motion of fields, which were uh, of this form. So these were the field uh, equation of motion of the fields where we have a summation index over the mu part. Now, uh, now one of the questions that we can ask is uh, what kind of a transformation uh, or an infinitesimal transformation? Uh, it can be a discrete transformation that 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 is uh, of such form such that the Lagrangian changes by a total derivative. That means the Lagrangian suffers a change. So L goes to L plus uh, del mu F mu. So where F is a function of field only. So what is such kind of a transformation such that the Lagrangian changes by a total derivative. That means all the terms are contracted. And if this happens, uh, then the equation of motion of field, that is these equations, they remain unchanged. So, and such transformations for which the Lagrangian changes by a total derivative are called uh, as a symmetry. Uh, these are the symmetries corresponding to uh, the underlying fields. And uh, this uh, is because that the equation of motion of fields are unchanged. So let's see if we have a change of a total derivative, then we can write this as delta L equal to. Uh, so this is the total derivative. So but this is actually del del x mu f mu, which can be written as del del phi f and del mu f del mu phi uh, we just use the chain rule which is del phi f and del mu phi now once we have this uh, written now what we can do is uh, we can try to we can see that why this uh, equation of motion actually is unchanged this is because let's try to calculate this particular object the equation of motion will be unchanged if we can show that this is equal to if this is equal to uh, if this is equal to if this is equal to this the change for the only for the change in Lagrangian part if this is equal to this uh, then we can say that the equation of motion will be unchanged because this part will eventually cancel out when we will use the changed Lagrangian. So why will this be true is quite simple to see because once we have this form of delta L we can differentiate. So this first part if we only evaluate this part we get uh, so you have this uh, so we have uh, del square phi uh, f uh, del mu phi uh, because del mu phi and phi are independent and now if we try to evaluate this part we have del mu which is this one and now we have to just uh, do a derivative with respect to mu so that will go out so I will get del phi of f but again f is only a function of the field so this can be evaluated using the chain rule. So it will be differentiation with respect to phi. So it will give me a del square phi. And then there will be a differentiation of the field. 
so we see these two are exactly same and hence the equation of motion remains unchanged uh, now once we have uh, found that uh, changing by a total derivative uh, makes the equation of motion unchanged we can also follow a different path now so so the lagrangian l uh, the l is actually the lagrangian density is a function of phi and del mu phi now a small variation in the lagrangian can be written using the uh, chain rule so this is uh, del over del phi l times delta phi plus del l over del del mu phi and now we can see that it will be del mu of delta phi but now uh, this is the delta l uh, this is something that we have also done while deriving the action so we will just try to uh, complete the total derivative so when we complete the total derivative uh, we get a term of this form so del l over del phi delta phi plus uh, del mu del l over del del mu phi uh, and then we have this delta phi but now i will this is the entire derivative and then we will need to subtract the um, the other part so that is del mu of uh, del l over del uh, del mu phi so uh, times delta phi so now uh, what we get overall is that uh, delta phi del l over del phi minus del mu del l over del del mu phi uh, and this part uh, plus we have a part del mu del l over del del mu phi uh, this is this and times we have a delta phi so now you see uh, when we say that uh, suppose uh, when we uh, perform a transformation and the lagrangian changes in this fashion this this l that we have here this is the initial l this is not the uh, l after the transformation so this l will always satisfy this equation of motion and this part will be zero so we are left with this term and this delta l is also precisely for this transformation to be a symmetry this l should also be equal to uh, del mu f mu that is the total derivative so now uh, we see so what uh, we finally notice that uh, so we finally notice that uh, del mu f mu is actually equal to del mu uh del l over del del mu phi and then you have here delta phi uh like this but now we can take it to that side and we see that del mu times uh, this entire quantity this is zero now uh, so this is a condition uh, for uh, when whenever we have a uh, symmetry associated uh, when we when we have a, whenever we have a continuous symmetry associated to this uh, lagrangian we will have this entire quantity as zero and this quantity is said to be as a current because you see first of all the, there is only one index because here is one index uncontracted and here is one index that is not contracted so what we have is a uh, del mu j mu equal to z and this j mu is called the current so it says that uh, associated to every continuous symmetry we have a conserved current and the conserved current is exactly given by this uh, form and now we can also uh, do uh, one more thing uh, that is uh, we can say that uh, further 
we can define something called as a conserved charge which is defined as a volume integral over the space of the zeroth component of this current now you see if the current satisfies this thing and now if we take the derivative of this uh, charge with respect to time then we see that the derivative here will be like j0 dot and that is equal to minus of the uh, so the divergence divergence of j so because uh, this is the einstein summation convention is here so this will be uh, just minus of integral over the volume uh, divergence of j and uh, here this now what we can say is that when we integrate over the entire space if this j is well behaved that is that is the current vanishes at infinity and minus infinity and plus infinity and then uh, this uh, then this will ensure that this conserved charge derivative will be actually zero what it means is that uh, associated to the conserved current j mu we have a conserved charge uh, this is this particular quantity here so uh, so and uh, now once we have understood this we will see that uh, this conserved charges uh, can also again be quantized and we will uh, see the see them in uh, discussing various field theories when we will reach and now we will be discussing